Welcome to Who Died Today America, your daily source for remembering and honoring the lives of those who have passed and the legacies of the most notable personalities. Garn Stevens, a versatile talent and lasting legacy in film and television. The entertainment world is in mourning as we come to terms with the loss of the versatile and accomplished Garn Stevens, who has passed away at the age of 87. She will be fondly remembered for her captivating portrayal of Marge Gutman in the 1982 horror sequel, Halloween the Third, Season of the Witch. Her performance not only made a lasting impression on horror enthusiasts, but also contributed significantly to the enduring legacy of the franchise. Stevens's exceptional on-screen chemistry with her then-husband and co-star, Tom Atkins, further elevated her performance in Halloween 3 and added depth to the film. Her remarkable range shone throughout her career, with memorable roles in films such as Portrait of a Rebel, The Remarkable Mrs. Sanger, The Seduction of Miss Leona, Children in the Crossfire, Killer Instinct, and Something to Live For, The Alice and Gert Story. In addition to her big screen accomplishments, Stevens graced television screens with guest appearances on iconic shows like All in the Family, Charlie's Angels, Family Ties, Falcon Crest, and Quantum Leap. Her talent extended to writing as well, boasting credits on shows such as St. Elsewhere, Trapper John, Maryland, Hotel, and Trial by Jury. Her work on St. Elsewhere garnered a well-deserved Primetime Emmy nomination. Garn Stevens' unwavering dedication to her craft and the entertainment industry will be cherished by colleagues, fans, and family alike. She leaves behind a diverse and rich legacy, spanning various genres and mediums, demonstrating her extraordinary adaptability as an actress and writer. Her contributions to the horror genre in particular will continue to inspire fans and fellow artists for years to come. In this time of mourning, we not only grieve the loss of a remarkable talent, but also celebrate her accomplishments and the indelible impact she made throughout her time in the limelight. Garn Stevens is survived by her daughter, Spencer Baird Nimi, who will undoubtedly uphold her mother's legacy and honour her memory. Tributes to Garn Stevens Ed Corin, a cherished illustrator and beacon of community spirit. Ed Corin, the esteemed illustrator who enchanted New Yorker readers for over six decades with his distinctively shaggy and lively cartoons, passed away at his home in Brookfield, Vermont, at the age of 87. While his extraordinary career at the New Yorker brought him global recognition, it was in Vermont, where he resided since the late 1970s, that he was most treasured. There, he was known as a kind hearted neighbor, community supporter, keen observer of Vermonters' idiosyncrasies, state cartoonist laureate, and most significantly to him, a Brookfield volunteer firefighter. Corin's whimsical and endearing cartoons often depicted amusing interactions between humans and animals, or illuminated the peculiarities of country living. Through these works, he developed a unique artistic style that was instantly identifiable and admired by fans and fellow cartoonists. As Vermont's state cartoonist laureate, his impact on the state's art and culture was profound and enduring. Beyond his artistic accomplishments, Corin was deeply committed to his local community. His role as a volunteer firefighter in Brookfield showcased his dedication to the welfare of his neighbours and his willingness to help others. This spirit of compassion, care and engagement in the lives of those around him exemplified the kind of person he was. Despite being diagnosed with lung cancer in 2020, Corin continued to create and publish his art until his final days, demonstrating an unwavering passion for his craft. In a statement that encapsulates his love for his work and life, he once remarked, I love my life, I love my work, I would hate to say goodbye to it. Ed Corin will not only celebrate his remarkable artistic legacy, but also his genuine and lasting commitment to his community. His contributions to the world of cartoon art and his impact on Vermont's culture will be warmly remembered by those who admired his work and were touched by his compassionate spirit. Tributes to Ed Corin. Lynette Dupree a resonating legacy of passion and talent. Lynette Dupree, a gifted stage singer and actress, 
left an indelible mark on the world of performing arts before her passing at the age of 58. Her legacy encompasses a multitude of unforgettable performances in musical theatre and memorable appearances on popular television shows. While she graced the screen in hit shows such as Desperate Housewives, NYPD Blue, The Good Place and Law and Order, Dupree's true brilliance shone on stage. Her captivating voice carried her through a diverse range of musicals across the nation and around the globe, including Dreamgirls, Josephine, The Color Purple, and Broadway's Best. As Lynette Dupree, she delivered an unforgettable performance in the Broadway production of Bring In De Noise, Bring In De Funk. Dupree's extraordinary voice not only served as the foundation of her stage career, but also found its way into other facets of the entertainment industry. She showcased her vocal talents in Disney's animated series The Lion Guard, mesmerizing viewers with her skillful performances. Her commitment to her craft extended beyond her personal endeavors, as she led the Los Angeles Third Community Praise Choir as its director, using her voice to inspire and uplift others. Her zeal for music and theater, combined with her exceptional talent, leaves a lasting impact on those who had the privilege of witnessing her performances. Lynette Dupree's legacy as a powerful voice and unforgettable stage presence will be cherished and remembered by fans, fellow performers, and the entertainment community for years to come. Tributes to Lynette Dupree. Mark Sheehan a lasting legacy of musical brotherhood and unwavering dedication. Mark Sheehan, the cherished guitarist of Irish pop band The Script, passed away at the age of 46 after a brief illness. His incredible talent and commitment to his bandmates leave a lasting legacy that will not be forgotten. Sheehan founded The Script in 2001 with frontman Danny O'Donoghue and drummer Glenn Power. Together, they created a musical bond that stood the test of time, with O'Donoghue once describing them as a band of brothers who stick together no matter what. This tight-knit brotherhood resonated through their music and performances, contributing to their widespread success. The script's self-titled debut album, released in 2008, reached number one in both the UK and Ireland, featuring hits like We Cry, Break Even, and The Man Who Can't Be Moved. From 2010 to 2019, the band held the distinction of having more UK number one albums than any other Irish act, a testament to their talent and the profound impact they had on fans across the globe. Sheehan was not only a brilliant guitarist, but also a devoted husband and father. He was married to Rena Sheehan, whom he met while she was working as a session singer, and the couple had three children. Despite the demands of a successful music career, he prioritized his family, even taking a break from the band's US tour to spend time with them. Fellow musicians and fans alike have expressed their grief and admiration for Sheehan. From Brian McFadden's description of him as one of the good guys, to Ryan Tedder's acknowledgement of Sheehan as one of the nicest, most genuine people, it's clear that his impact went beyond his music. Mark Sheehan's legacy is one of unwavering dedication to both his craft and his loved ones. His contributions to the music world, his passion for his family, and the brotherly bond he shared with his fellow band members will forever remain etched in the hearts of fans and fellow musicians. Tributes to Mark Sheehan Connie Martinson, a devoted advocate for literature and lifelong learner. Connie Martinson, the celebrated host of Connie Martinson Talks Books, passed away at the age of 90. As an insatiable reader and admirer of writers, Martinson made a significant impact on the literary world through her long-running cable television show, which aired from 1979 to 2015. Over the course of her career, she interviewed thousands of authors, including former President Barack Obama and renowned writers such as Maya Angelou, Ray Bradbury, and Norman Mailer. Martinson's dedication to the literary community led author Janet Fitch to describe her as an essential part of the literary life of this city. Her insightful and carefully prepared interviews demonstrated her passion for reading and her ability to connect with her guests on a deep level. As a result, many prominent writers and journalists, such as Pete Hamill and Maureen Dowd, chose to appear on her show. 
In addition to hosting her television programme, Martinson also played an important role in supporting her alma mater, Wellesley College. As a longtime friend and fellow alumna, Lee Raymer praised Martinson's commitment to the Los Angeles Wellesley Club and her ability to ask the questions that all readers would want answered. Martinson's love for literature was evident throughout her life, and her dedication to promoting the works of both established and -and up-and-coming authors made her a beloved figure in the literary community. Her mission to spread the joy of reading and her unwavering support for local libraries further demonstrated her commitment to the written word. The Connie Martinson Talks Books Collection, which contains nearly 2,000 interviews, is now accessible through the Claremont College's digital library site. This invaluable resource ensures that Martinson's legacy as a champion of literature and the lifelong learner will continue to inspire future generations of readers and writers. Tributes to Connie Martinson. Royston Ellis, a beat poet and prolific writer whose influence spanned decades. The literary world has lost a significant figure with the recent passing of Royston Ellis at the age of 82. A beat poet who rose to prominence in the 1950s and continued to make his mark through the 2010s, Ellis's diverse body of work encompasses poetry, fiction, biographies, and travel writing. Although perhaps best known for his connection to the Beatles and John Lennon, Ellis's far-reaching influence extends well beyond his association with the iconic band. From an early age, Royston Ellis captivated British youth with his unique talent. At just 18, he published his first book of poetry, Jiving to Jip, and by the early 1960s, he was performing his poetry on television, backed by Cliff Richard's group, The Shadows, which included a young Jimmy Page, later of the Yardbirds and Led Zeppelin fame. Ellis's work and persona caught the attention of a young John Lennon and the two connected over their shared love of American beat poets and the burgeoning counterculture movement of the 60s. Ellis inspired Lennon's song Paperback Writer and claimed to have suggested the band change their name spelling from Beatles to Beatles, although this claim remains disputed. By the age of 20, Ellis had transitioned from the beatnik scene to focus on travel writing. His insatiable curiosity led him to explore the world resulting in dozens of biographies, travelogues, and guides. Ellis also authored 20 works of fiction, many under the pseudonym Richard Tresillian. In 1979, he relocated to Sri Lanka, where he continued to write until 2013. Royston Ellis's legacy is a testament to his versatile talent and passion for the written word. His influence on British youth and the literary scene of the time remains undeniable. With a career that spanned poetry, fiction, biographies, and travel writing, Ellis leaves behind an impressive and diverse body of work that will continue to inspire future generations of writers and readers alike. As we mourn the loss of this creative force, we also celebrate his enduring contributions to the world of literature and the impact he made during his lifetime. Tributes to Royston Ellis Bryn Parry, a champion of wounded veterans and a creative force. Bryn Parry, the founder of Help for Heroes, passed away at 67 after a battle with stage 4 pancreatic cancer. He leaves behind a legacy of unwavering support for war veterans and their families, as well as a creative and entrepreneurial spirit that inspired change. After serving 10 years as a soldier in the Royal Green Jackets, Bryn transitioned into a successful career as a cartoonist. However, his life took a new direction when in 2007, he was inspired to launch Help for Heroes after a visit to wounded soldiers in the hospital. The charity, which he co-founded with his wife Emma, has since provided life-changing support to over 27,000 veterans and their families. Bryn's tireless work for Help for Heroes was recognized with a CBE just eight weeks before his passing. As CEO, he created the iconic hero bear, H4H Stretcher Bearer, medal logos, and those of Battleback and the Phoenix of Defense Recovery. His commitment to helping wounded servicemen and women was unwavering, and his passion for the cause was contagious. James Needham, CEO at Help for Heroes, said, 
Bryn was instrumental in changing the focus of the nation and the way we regard both military service and wounded veterans. His founding principles and no-nonsense approach remain at the heart of the organization's mission. Bryn's creative talents extended beyond his work for Help for Heroes. After leaving the army, he and his wife Emma started Bryn Parry Studios in 1986. Over the next 23 years, they built the brand into a well-known producer of high-quality gifts based on Bryn's designs and completed hundreds of commissions. The Prince of Wales expressed his deep sadness at Bryn's passing, describing him as a life-affirming, inspirational man. Bryn Parry's legacy as a champion of wounded veterans and a creative force will be remembered by those whose lives he touched. Tributes to Bryn Parry. Norm Kent, a tireless advocate for equality and justice. Norm Kent, who passed away at the age of 73, leaves behind a legacy of unyielding advocacy for gay rights, cannabis law reform, and the pursuit of justice for the underdog. Born in Brooklyn, Kent made a name for himself in South Florida as a criminal defense attorney, publisher of the South Florida Gay News, and radio talk show host. Throughout his life, he was a fearless crusader for the rights of those who had been marginalized, cast out, or discriminated against. Kent's work as a gay rights advocate was both prolific and pioneering. He frequently appeared as a commentator on CNN and Fox News, challenging homophobia and championing individual rights and free expression. As the publisher of the South Florida Gay News, an LGBTQ weekly newspaper launched in 2009, Kent played a critical role in shaping discourse and raising awareness on issues impacting the LGBTQ community. In addition to his work in the realm of LGBTQ rights, Kent was a prominent figure in the movement to reform cannabis laws. As the past chairman of the board of directors at the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws, he represented patients, growers, and buyers clubs throughout Florida for more than 30 years. Kent was a pioneer in medical necessity defenses for marijuana users, winning groundbreaking cases that made headlines across the country. Described by friends and colleagues as having a gift of gab, a wicked sense of humour, and a relentless determination to fight for those he believed had been wronged, Kent's impact on South Florida and beyond is immeasurable. His ability to capture the limelight and bring attention to critical issues has left a lasting mark on the fight for equality, justice and social change. Though he may be gone, his spirit of advocacy, resilience and humour will continue to inspire those who carry on the fight for a more just and inclusive society. Tributes to Norm Kent Donald W. Ernst, a pioneer in animation and master of film production. Donald W. Ernst, an accomplished American film, music and sound editor and film producer, passed away at the age of 89. With a long and illustrious career in the animation industry, Ernst's contributions and influence will be remembered and celebrated for years to come. Ernst began his career in television, editing renowned shows like Gilligan's Island, Cimarron Strip and Gunsmoke. His talent in editing eventually led him to work at Ralph Bakshi's studio, where he edited groundbreaking animated films such as Coonskin, The Lord of the Rings, Wizards, and Hey Good Lookin'. Upon joining Disney, Ernst expanded his expertise into film production, working on beloved classics like Aladdin, Homeward Bound The Incredible Journey, and Fantasia 2000. His skill in storytelling and understanding of animation also led him to produce the English voice adaptation of the critically acclaimed Japanese film Spirited Away. Over the course of his career, Ernst built an impressive filmography, showcasing his diverse talents in editing and producing. From working on short films like Roller Coaster Rabbit to editing the music of Silent Rage and Mind Games, Ernst's dedication to his craft was evident in every project he touched. Donald W. Ernst's legacy as a pioneer in the animation industry and a master of film production will continue to inspire and influence future generations of filmmakers and animators. His work on iconic films and television shows not only entertained audiences, but also pushed the boundaries of what was possible in animation and storytelling. 
Tributes to Donald W. Ernst Marilyn McReevy. Kent Oz Nelson, a visionary leader and community pillar. Oz Nelson, the former CEO of UPS who had a transformative impact on the company and the city of Atlanta, passed away at the age of 85. His visionary leadership and commitment to community service left an indelible mark on the lives of those he encountered and the organizations he championed. Nelson began his career at UPS in 1959 and rose through the ranks to serve as CEO from 1990 to 1996. Under his leadership, UPS expanded its global presence and became a logistics powerhouse, connecting customers worldwide. He championed innovative technologies, such as real-time package tracking systems and handheld scanning devices, and led the company's expansion into logistics services, laying the foundation for its customer-first strategy. Beyond his professional achievements, Nelson's dedication to community service and philanthropy defined his legacy. His tenure at UPS saw a deepening of the company's commitment to giving back through financial support and community engagement. He served in leadership roles for numerous non-profit organizations, including the CDC Foundation, the Carter Center, the United Way of America, and the Annie E. Casey Foundation. Nelson also made significant contributions to education reform in Kentucky. In 1991, he relocated UPS's corporate headquarters from Greenwich, Connecticut to Atlanta, where the company established strong ties with the community. One notable accomplishment was the construction of the environmentally sensitive UPS headquarters in Sandy Springs, which demonstrated the company's commitment to preserving nature and providing a pleasant work environment for employees. Nelson's impact on Atlanta extended to its residents as well. His experience with United Way transformed UPS's policy on workplace giving campaigns, resulting in the company becoming one of the top donors to United Way of Greater Atlanta and nationally. He viewed this as part of the company's responsibility to give employees opportunities to contribute to the community. His contributions to UPS, Atlanta, and numerous non-profit organizations will have a lasting impact, ensuring his legacy endures in the hearts and minds of those who were touched by his life and work. Tributes to Oz Nelson. Thanks for watching Who Died Today America. If you enjoyed this tribute, please give it a thumbs up and share with friends. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more inspiring stories. Leave a comment below telling us who inspired you the most. See you in the next video.